Today on Always Hungry, we're gonna make the most amazing pizza. First step, we're gonna make a white pizza sauce. What's a white pizza sauce? Very simple. We're gonna make basically bechamel using butter, flour, milk, and because it's Italian, a bunch of Parmesan cheese. Let's go. So for the sauce, the first step is to make a roux. What's a roux? It's the same amount of butter and flour and we're gonna melt together and add some milk to it. I just need like this much to be honest. Beep. The butter is almost fully melted. Now we're gonna add some flour. And again, you know what? We're gonna eyeball this thing here. Let's just go with that here. And you can mix that up. Spoon's not the best option for us at this point. Good old whisk. And this is a white roux. You can also make a brown roux. If you keep your butter and flour cooking for longer, then become brown and you can use a brown for things such as like uh, a gumbo or like trying to make a brown stock or a brown sauce. Okay, you see now it's already getting a little brownie brownie. Add some cold milk to this here. Not all at once. At this point, you want to just kind of like whisk everything in. See how thick that is already? And now you can incorporate more milk in there. And if it's too thick, add some more milk. I like to have my sauce more on the runny side than the too thick side, because then it's like mixed with the dough, it just becomes too thick. Also, you know, sometimes it's gonna happen, it's gonna become a bit lumpy, but also I have a trick for you if that happens. Now you, you wanna bring this to a simmer to cook out the flour. So you see now we have some bubbles going on, that means your bechamel is good to go. Look at this. There's some lumps in there, I can see it, but we're gonna fix it. So what we're gonna do now is, Transfer this into a container like this. Make sure I season this heavily because it's only flour, butter, and milk, so it doesn't taste like much. So gems with the black pepper, salt, obviously. I'm using salted butter, so don't go too crazy. And we're also gonna add some parm in there, so don't go too crazy for that as well. And now, I'm gonna go with a generous amount of parm in there. And now my trick to get rid of all the lumps is, ah, is a good old hand mixer. Or a blender too, whatever works, you know? That's how you do it, guys. Almost forgot, we add one clove of garlic in there. We're just gonna grate it in there first before we blend it. Here we go. Lump free. So basically at this point, for reference, this should taste like Alfredo sauce, you know? Oh my God. Next step, potatoes. I have these beautiful fingerling potatoes and we use this very dangerous but very efficient tool called the mandolin. Make sure you always use your palm as a guard and your fingertips pointing to the sky to avoid any major accidents. And for this, you wanna go with some nice tin coins, paper tin maybe, it has to be see-through because these are gonna go on the pizza raw at a very high temperature, but you still wanna make sure they're thin enough to fully cook in that minute in the oven. And the reason why I'm having the potatoes, first of all, drop in the bowl of water is to make sure they don't go brown and oxide and become all gross. But also, you wanna remove that excess of starch that's gonna prevent them from crisping up, which is what we want, so. So getting back to the trick, you know, it's only gonna work once you get to like the point where it's, you know, getting too close to the blade. Because if you're gonna go from here, you know, there's less chances of uh, slicing a finger. And when you get to this point here, you don't wanna waste any food. That's where the palm and the fingertips comes in. See? Keep your tips up, baby. Next step, we're gonna slice some onions with the same amazing tool, the mandolin that is. See, now the fucking palm and the fingertips makes more sense, you know? You're gonna cut these very thin, paper thin even, you know? Look at this here, that's perfect. And you could even like put these in the cold water as well because they're gonna lose like, that very like pungent uh, onion taste, but since these are cipollini, they're nice and sweet, we're gonna keep them as is, baby. Here. I have an amazing pizza dough. Is it homemade? Hell no, why? Sometimes, you know, we don't have time to work 48 hours for the perfectly rise fucking sourdough pizza. What you can do is go on your favorite ordering app and order pizza dough from your favorite pizza joint and support local restaurants. You can call me lazy or smart. Either way, we got pizza dough. Let's go. So now, I have this double O pizza flour in a bowl here. I'm just gonna dip 
the whole thing in there. There you go. And a bit on the cutting board as well here. And boom, right in there. I don't want to see any of you guys getting the rolling pin out. We're going to do a full Italian proper. So with your fingers, you want to kind of build your crust first. So push out the dough towards the outside of the dough like this while going into a circular motion like this and then punch in the middle to get some more air out of there. And once you have this dough forming, you can pinch it like so. And then you just, you know, use your girlfriend called gravity and let this thing stretch out by its natural weight. Put it back and you can go crazy thin or you can go medium, you know, it's up to you, that's personal. I'm not here to tell you how to eat your pizza. Keep in mind though, it's always gonna retract a little bit, right? So you wanna go a bit wider than what you want for final results. So this for me is looking pretty good. Make sure you don't stretch it too thin because then it might rip, you get a hole in your pie and all your friends are gonna call you a loser. So you know what? That's probably good. It's not see-through, but it's almost there. Now you could, at this point, you could use a paddle and get under there right now, which I'm gonna do to avoid a disaster. Speaking of which, Shout out to Gosney, you know? I just got hooked up with this brand new, I think it's called a peel actually, peel. A pizza peel! Now, what we're gonna do is get right underneath this dough. Oh, 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 <laughs> see? Imagine this full of garnish, we're in the disaster. And now you can do another stretchy stretch here. Perfect, see? It's beautiful guys, life is good. We have our white sauce. Okay, so pizza sauce, nice little scoop, be generous, you know? No one likes a fucking dry pizza. We're gonna start with some uh, some Parmesan cheese extra, cause you know what? There's not much cheese in that pizza anyway, so Parm. And now I've been thinking about this for a minute. Should I put the onions underneath or on top? You know what? They're so nice and fresh. I might even just put them on top raw, is that crazy? I don't know, I don't, I don't know. So you know what, fuck it. We're gonna do potatoes first, that's the plan. Okay, so now these are in the water, so we have to make sure they're very nice and dry. Because if, if they're not dry, they'll never crisp up. Squeeze some water out of there too. There you go. And then we're gonna place them on here. Lay them down flat, like this. And now I'm running low on racks, so we're just gonna use this instead. And you're gonna just go place them. This needs to be perfect, but you know, take your time. Make it nice, but don't take too much time because people are hungry, you know? I know, it takes a while. You know, guys, you know, sometimes, you know, in life, you have to put on the, uh, put down the time, put down the hours, you know? Rome was not built in one day, okay? You think the guy who fucking invented pizza did it in the first, you know, first try? Probably not, you know, probably, uh, actually maybe, it probably was a mistake at first and became something delicious, I don't know. Sometimes someone's gonna have to Google fact this pizza story, I don't even know. All those potatoes are kind of like curling up, which means we're gonna be seeing some amazing, crispy potatoes on there. And again, guys, you know, I'm not even inventing a pizza here. It's been done for a long, long time. Some people might think it's crazy, it's like starch on starch. But you know what? If you've been following me for a bit, you know I don't count calories. You know I'm all about that fucking good life. I'm about good times. Next, this is a nice calabrese. We're gonna take the casing off. So calabrese from Calabria. I don't even need the fucking accent. I'm just gonna say it like it is. Calabria, calabrese, whatever. It's just, you know, pork sausage with some spices, some calabrese peppers. And you're probably thinking, whoa, you're putting raw sausage on a pizza, bruv? Yes, but you see I'm going with very small chunks and it's gonna be going this super crazy hot oven, like magma hot, so this won't stand a chance to stay raw. We don't do raw dog here, guys, okay? Not about this raw dog life, baby. Now, time for rosemary! So I'm gonna cut a beautiful sprig of rosemary straight off the plant. You could use a knife and chop, but I'm just gonna go like this here and cut some smaller pieces. I think I was probably a hairdresser in my second life, you know? And now this whole thing about onions, you know what? I'm gonna put them around there right now. This would make the fucking grumpiest Nona and the whole of fucking Italy smile. Let me tell you this much. We're gonna hit this thing with a bit of the best olive oil in the world. You already know. Laurent Dagenet, La Belle Excuse, Lincoln Bio. Get it or don't, you know? Madonna, hey, look at this a pizza. Hey, it's a beautiful thing, eh? Okay, so we're good for the oven now. We have the Gosney blasting outside. It's probably like up to fucking Mordor temperature right now. I'm guessing like 900 Fahrenheit. So the goal here is to go, you know, in and out to get the nice, nice rise of the dough. Everything's gonna crisp up and hopefully it's gonna be fucking amazing. Let's go, follow me.
Oh, guys, you know, look at this beauty. Everything is nice and crispy. Bottom's cut. It's time to cut it. Now I'm gonna use this amazing Game of Thrones style pizza slicer roller. Six slices. Look at this crust, guys. Look at this. Look at the bottom here. Perfectly cooked pizza. It's nice and crunchy. Doesn't flop, you know. No, like, no, no one likes a fucking floppy pizza. It's my favorite part of every episode. It is tasting time. Melty cheese sauce, potatoes are crispy, sausage is perfectly cooked, rosemary smells amazing, onions, you know, what else do you want, okay? And also, don't be a loser, you know? No one's gonna fucking respect you in life if you use cutlery for pizza, you know? Unless you're like one of those crazy food etiquette person. One bite, everyone knows the rule. Mmm, mmm, it's a 10 out of 10. But, let's see what a real Italian will tell us about this pizza. Giovanni! Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> All right. so, you good? Let's see. Giovanni Vaca. Do you have a fork? <laughs> Give it a nine. Hey, <laughs> a nine! <laughs> and that's a wrap on today's episode of Always Hungry. If you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making this pizza, please like the video, leave a comment, let us know what pizza you'd like to see us doing next. Don't forget the most important part, subscribe to the channel. We are past the 70,000 subscribers mark on the road to 100,000 subscribers. Help us get there together as a family, enjoying food, good times, good vibes, and I'll see you on the next episode of Always Hungry. 